homeschool moms. I am hopping on here to share with you about a heart for you China. This is a curriculum that is new to my kids and I this year. It is put out by Cornerstone Curriculum. And while I have used Cornerstone Curriculum for junior high and high school, I have never used any of their elementary curriculum. And so I was really excited when they agreed to give a heart for you China to me for free to use with my family and to share with you as well. As I've talked about this curriculum and shared about it over on Instagram, I've had a lot of people ask for a kind of more in-depth look into the curriculum. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is turn the camera around in just a minute and give you a look inside the teacher's manual as well as the student workbook. The student workbook is called My Passport to China. Now this is not all of the curriculum, okay? The curriculum is not a teacher's manual and a workbook. This is a curriculum that is more of a learning through living books, learning through looking at maps. It includes, it comes with a lot of books um, to read to your children. Um, it comes with a DVD actually to watch. It comes with a game to play. There's just a lot um, that comes in this kind of curriculum kit. So I encourage you to go to their website. I will leave it linked down below in the description and go check out you know, everything that comes with this curriculum. But I know that a lot of people have questions about what exactly the teacher's manual looks like. Is it easy to use? How does it work? And what do the student workbook pages look like? So let's turn the camera around and take a look inside of both of those. Let's go ahead and start with the teacher's manual, which is this one right here. And I'm gonna open it up. I put some tabs here so that I can turn to the correct pages. We're gonna open up to the table of contents. And what you'll see at first is that this is a 36 week curriculum. Now, that really is a guideline. The way that this curriculum is set up in my opinion, is that these weeks are more of suggestions. Because as I show you how an actual week looks, you're gonna see that there really isn't anything that says, you know, do this on day one of week one and day two of week two. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. So these, I consider these just suggestions. So for example, on week two, it says the great adventure. That lesson should take you about a week. And if you want to stay on track and get done in 36 weeks, you probably want to try to fit that in into your week two. As you can see here, week three and four is Marco Polo. So Marco Polo is probably going to take you about two weeks to get through. Um, they also have some catch-up weeks. So week 10 and where's the other one? Week 19 are catch-up weeks. So really this is more of a 34 week curriculum. And But again, just guidelines. Some of these topics, your kids are gonna wanna go deeper into and you're going to spend more time on. Some of them you might breeze through. We did week one in one day where we took Marco Polo, took us a little bit more than two weeks to go through because the kids, it's, um reading a book and the kids wanted to read about it and talk more about it and all of that. So again, these are just guidelines for you to follow. Let's go ahead and use the Marco Polo one as an example. Um, you can see Marco Polo, they say to try to do within week three and four. You're also getting the England one in in week three as well. So Marco Polo maybe should take you a week and a half or so, but let me show you how that one is set up. I've got it tabbed right over here. And so here you can clearly see this is the section for the Marco Polo lesson. And this is what I love about this curriculum. This says, what am I to do? What am I to say? So it it is just an open and go curriculum. You do not have to do a whole lot of planning, really any planning ahead of time. You open this up and it tells you what you need to do and what you need to say. So right here it says, read the prayer request from the prayer calendar, which comes with the curriculum. And so you're gonna read that prayer request and, and it says, what do I say? Well, let's you say to your kids, let's pray together for this request. And, and you do that prayer request. You're gonna read the introduction to the adventures of Marco Polo. Um, you're gonna find Marco Polo. What you're gonna to say to your kids is, let's find Marco Polo on um, your timeline in your passport, which is the workbook right in here. So you're gonna to say to your kids, let's find that on pages 22 to 26. And as we read, um, 
you know, Marco Polo, we're going to add in important information about him and his travels and about China. And then you're going to read Marco Polo, the Polo Brothers. And here's the dialogue that you're going to have with your kids. Now, again, it Remember, Marco Polo is probably about a week and a half or so that it's going to take you to do. So let me show you what that's going to, how much material that is. So you have that page here. You've got this here again, reading more of the Marco Polo story. Here are the little prompts to talk to your kids. Here's some stuff to talk about. You would read this to your kids and then continue reading in the Marco Polo, having these this discussion here with your kids, these questions, all right? Here's some more reading that you're doing and what you're talking about. Over here, it says open the DK China Eyewitness Travel Guide. So you're going to be looking at another book that comes with the curriculum and um, looking at those pages and talking about them with your kids and doing some more of that. And then over here is just a list of all these different pages in that um, DK, what is it? DK China Eyewitness Travel Guide. These are just a whole bunch of different pages that you can look at with your kids and it tells you kind of what um, to focus on on that particular page. Some of these, my kids, we flipped over, we went, okay, yeah, that's cool. And other ones we went, whoa, this is interesting. Let's read every single thing on that page. Um, wow, the Yellow River looks really cool. Can we research that more? And we'd kind of take rabbit trails. And so that's why I'm saying you can, you can make this curriculum as much or as little as you really want to. Then there are also here um, links to um, different places on the internet to find more pictures and information about the stuff that you're learning about. Again, this is all supposed to take about a week and a half, two weeks. You're gonna be looking at some more internet links, reading to your kids. Here it says, um, what are your impressions of China and the Chinese people? Journal them into my passport on page 27. So again, your kids would pull out their workbook here, my passport to China, turn to that page and go ahead and do what it says here. So let me keep going. And then, so that was the end of it. So that should take you about a week or a week and a half or two weeks. And so what I love about this is, let's say you start this and you, you do the prayer, maybe you read this and you're done for the day. Your kids have lost, their, their attention span is gone. You can just put a little tab over here um, so that you know the next time you come back to A Heart For You China, you're gonna pick up right there. And the next day or a couple days later, you come back to this curriculum and you start working through and your kids are like, this is so exciting, mom, keep reading. You keep working through it. You, you, you know, you take some rabbit trails somewhere, you put a little sticky where you left off and you come back to it another time. And again, those weeks are just guidelines. If you want to spend four weeks on Marco Polo and his journey to China, you can certainly do that. And that's what I love about this curriculum. Everything is scripted for you and it tells you how many weeks roughly it should take each thing. So you can stick to this as closely as you want to, but you can go off and take rabbit trails, um, dive into it more. You can skip things if you want to, um, really go at your own pace. And if you want to do spend five minutes one day on this, an hour another day. I mean, it's really up to your kids. And so I kind of let my kids drive how much we do. If they're really interested and engaged, we just keep going. And if they're disinterested, we just do a little bit and then we move on. Let me show you another lesson. This one is the lesson on dynasties. Let me flip back over here and show you Okay, right here it says dynasties. It says week 16 to 18. That means that this should take maybe three weeks. 16, 17, 18, so three weeks. And then the week after that's a catch up week. So you really could spend four weeks on dynasty if you want to and still you know, be on track to finish within a 36 week um, school year. So this one's on dynasties. Again, has some things that you're going to read to your kids. Here is a little video on YouTube that you can watch with your kids. Again, use what you want at your discretion. These are just resources to help your kids learn about China and get a heart for China, but you can certainly skip what you 
want to um, and add other things in as well. So here they're looking at um, the history of China from the DK China um, book. Um, and they're working on um, their timeline here that is also in their um, workbook there. But let me just show you how much is in this one. So remember, this is supposed to take about three, even up to four weeks, so a month's worth. So there's a lot in here going through all the different dynasties in China, lots of um, different things that you're going to be reading. Um, they're going to be doing some different things in their workbook that they have there. I'm just going to keep flipping through. They've got some links here that you can go to on the internet. Okay, here's some more pages that they can read um, in the DK China book. Some work in their passport, which is their um, workbook. Here is a section that you're going to be reading to them. So that's quite a bit of reading. Well, not quite a bit, but that's a little bit more reading out of the teacher's manual than normal. Um, here it says spend time praying. So you're going to be praying for the people of China. You're going to be reading a passage in scripture. Have your child copy this passage into their uh, passport. And there is a lot of copy work in this uh, workbook that you'll see. Um, again, reading some more. Again, we're just, they're learning all about the dynasties, but instead of having them read it out of a textbook, they're going to be learning through different books and internet sites and you reading little pieces to them. So a little bit more of an exciting way to learn about the history of China and the dynasties than you know just reading it out of a tip typical textbook. So again, you can see that this was a pretty meaty um, lesson and that's why it's supposed to take you know three to four weeks for your student to do so that's how the teacher's manual is set up like I said it is very open and go and it tells you what are you supposed to do and what are you supposed to say what what um, you know book you should be reading it tells you exactly when you need to have your student pull out their workbook I mean it really is open and go and it tells you exactly what you need to do. But again, what I love about it is you can take rabbit trails, you can add other stuff in, you can skip things and, and really adapt it if you want to. And if you're the kind of person that needs to do everything and check all the boxes, you can certainly use it that way as well. So it's very uh, versatile. So let's go ahead and move now to the student workbook. This is called My Passport to China. And it is, um, like I said, the student workbook. I wanna open up here. And here it's kind of set up like a passport so your student could put their picture and, you know, put their, sign their name and the date and what city they departed from. So wherever you live and their destination is China. So kind of cute there. I want to show you kind of what is inside um, the workbook here. One of the things I love about this curriculum is that it's not just teaching our kids about China. It's not just um, giving them a heart for China and for the people of China, but it is helping to give them a biblical worldview. And one of the ways they do that is having the students fill out this little chart as they read different stories. So this is going to be the story of Little Pear. As they're filling that out, they're going to be, or reading about the book, I'm sorry, they're going to be filling out this chart. And so what this curriculum says is that what a person believes, what the main core beliefs are of a culture or of a people, um, or even just one person, um, is going to affect their rituals. It's going to affect their cultures and traditions, how they dress and what they eat, their art, music, literature, language, government, values, their lifestyle, their behavior and morals. What you believe affects these things and so then they're going to look at the story of little through the story of little pair and other stories obviously um and they're going to fill this in how did what they believe affect their customs um and what did we see in little pair about maybe um how they dressed and what kind of food they ate what kind of art and music literature did they have and all of that. So they're gonna be working on that. So I absolutely love this component. That is one of the things I love about Cornerstone Curriculum is it really is teaching our kids to have a biblical worldview. Um, here's another assignment for Little Pear. They're gonna be drawing a picture. It says, describe one or two things you did with Little 
a little pair on your weekend together. Um, so again, there is an assignment and they had to work on that. Um, here is one for the story uh, Young Fu. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Again, same kind of chart that they're going to be working on. And then Here's another example of a worksheet they might do. This is the old way of life, living in a small village. They're gonna fill this in, and then the new, lay, new way of life, and just comparing those. Um, also for this book, they're gonna be evaluating the beliefs of the people and checking, does this is this in line with what the Bible teaches? Is it not in line with what the Bible teaches? Or do you not know? And then we can discuss that with them as um, their parents. And so we're gonna be evaluating the beliefs of the um, Chinese culture through reading the story, Yang Fu. So absolutely love that they are learning about China. They're getting a heart for China. They're, they're learning how to think biblically from a biblical worldview, all by reading a fun story and then doing these workbook pages. Here's some copy work that they're gonna be doing. There is a lot of copy work in this book. Here's a little interview kind of that they're going to do. They're going to pretend that they are young Fu and that they're being interviewed. And so there's some questions. And again, here's another um, project that or thing that they're going to be working on with the beliefs of young Fu. So, um, another uh, thing in here is Bible translation. So this is another work workbook page that I wanted to show you give you just some a variety of what's in here. Um, here is something they're gonna be learning about Gladys Allward, and so they're gonna be filling in some things here, and what did the book have to say about God, and is, is God infinite? Is he personal, or is he both? And so they're gonna fill in some statements and mark off <clears throat> what that um, statement said about who God is. And so I think maybe you can kind of see here how this curriculum is for grades third through seventh. So there's definitely some stuff in here that is more geared towards a third grader. There's stuff in here that's more geared toward a you know seventh grader. And so you would obviously expect more from an older student and less from a younger student. Um, some of the things that I have done to adapt it a little bit is when it comes time for copy work, I'm not having my seventh grader do the copy work. She's doing some additional assignments and research on China and the things that we had just learned about to try to beef it up a little bit for her. And um, my fifth grader is kind of doing everything that is in here. My third grader, I don't always make her do every single thing or maybe not in as much detail. So she might only have to do, um, you know, a few of the statements. Um, I'm, we haven't gotten to this activity, so I'm not exactly sure what it is, but just trying to give you an idea where my third grader might do a little less. Expect my seventh grader to go above and beyond. And then the last one I wanted to show you right here is another example of some of the assignments they're gonna be doing in this workbook. This is a storyboard that they're gonna be putting together on um, the, the uh, Little Woman book that they're gonna be reading about Gladys Allward. So we'll just look at a couple more pages. Here's some more Bible translation stuff. Um, looks like there's some copy work here and, and that, an activity to do here. So like I said, there is a lot of copy work in here. Um, a lot of other fun uh, workbook pages to get your kids to think about China, to think biblically, to think critically. So um, a lot of fun stuff in this workbook. So um, if you have any questions um, about this curriculum, go ahead and leave them uh, down below in the comment section and hopefully I can answer them for you. And make sure to go to the Cornerstone curriculum website and you can learn more about this curriculum and the heart behind it and why they created it and all of that. So hopefully this was helpful for you.